Hi, this is Marsha Mason. I'm an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts, and today I'm going to talk about value, or lights and darks, in your watercolor paintings. The key to greatness in watercolor is how to break down your composition into values, then translate those values into color. So values can be expressed on a scale of 1 to 10, or 0 to 100 percent. The darkest, which is uh, black is 100% or 10 and then as you add white you're going to get lighter colors. This is a pre-printed value card. I folded it in half. It was twice as long and I uh, laminated it and then I punched these holes in it because they're really handy. This is a color chart I made of two of the colors I'm using today and you can actually take Take this and check and see uh, where your values are, uh, and that gives you an idea of how much water to add and how much uh, to mix of, of the colors you're mixing. Now, there are different ways you can see a value when you're using color. The one I like is my 3D glasses. I um, got these a long time ago. I don't look through the blue, just the red. If you've got pieces of red cellophane, that works too. But when you look at something colored, it'll turn out black and white and gray when you look through the red lens. Very handy. Now, we're going to do a pair today. And I did a value study. It's going to end up looking something like this. I've got my darkest darks. I've got the medium tones and then the lightest on where the light hits the pair and down here. So let's get started. I'm using a yellow that's really good for botanicals. It's called transparent yellow and it's on the materials list but it comes out of the tube kind of brown but then when you add a lot of water it almost turns a, a lemon yellow. And then to make orange, I'm going to add a red. I love quinacridone coral. It's a very pretty color. A little on the bright side for a pair, but that's okay. We can tone it down. And then for my blue, blue's probably the key color here because it's what is going to make the darks. I like French ultramarine blue. It has beautiful granulation and if I put a little bit of um, burnt sienna uh, on my palette, I can mix that with the, the ultramarine blue and I get blacks and grays and very beautiful browns and, uh, and deep blues. So, let's get started. I would like, oh, except I need water. Uh, I'll be right back. Yes, you can't do water without watercolor. I mean, we can't do watercolor without water. <laughs> okay, we're going to mix a green for the background to about this darkness. I'm going to pick up some of that yellow there. And there we go. That's kind of on the blue side. I think that'll make it fade into the background nicely. Okay, I'm not going to be too worried about getting things precise or straight. I'm just going to lay down some color. Um, that's not enough. There we go. We are on our way. Now there are much nicer ways to make even washes, but I'm actually not too worried about an even wash on this. It's the little imperfections that make it a little more interesting. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so we're just going to go right down here to where the table or this horizontal surface starts. Okay. Uh, yes. Alrighty. Now, once you get this down, it's kind of hard to uh, make little corrections at the edges without it looking rather um, 
uh, overworked. So we're not going to do that. We are going to do this other. Oh, and I wanted to point out, we've already defined most of the pear shape right there with that. Now I need a, a lighter tone for the other part of the background. So let's just, oh yes, I like that. Let's just do some of that. If I were showing you textures, and I will in another video one of these days, I would be adding some texture to these lovely background pieces just to give it a little more interest. Not today though. Today we're going to talk about the pear. Well, the pear is mostly appeared even though we haven't painted the pear yet. It's all not pear. Let's see if I can get that up oh, just a little lighter than and this wall back here. There we go. Really don't want to have this too wet or it will make it just a longer process. So I'm going to tilt this and let this kind of run down and off my page because I've set this up to be a 5 by 7 I like to think ahead and do standard sizes. That way I can check them with a mat, and I just happen to have one handy. Now I'm going to throw some of this lovely green on here before I do my wash, just because my yellow wash on there, just because I like it. So we're going to get rid of that and put all yellow in there. Oh boy, yes, yes indeed. Okay, it's a little on the bright side, but let's have a bright pair. And away we go. I'm leaving just a little light on that, uh, the shadow side because I, I'm wiping pigment off my brush now because I want this to be the light side. Okay. Um because it looks kind of backlit and I like that look. Okay, now we're going to do what's called charging the wash. We've laid down a wash for that pair and now we're going to touch it with other colors. Oh, let me find a brush I like. There we go. And uh, that will be kind of interesting. In fact, I'm just going to touch it with water and we'll get something that's called a blossom, and that's kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to touch it with some more green. In fact, I'm going to give it some dark right in here where there's a shadow, and I'm going to get a hunk of blue on there. Oh, yes. Yes, you can start to see now the pear is starting to sit down right here. Oh, I like that. And I'm going to put some of this up on the pear because it's all in shadow and reflecting. Yeah, this. So with values now, we've defined the shape of the object and we've defined, well, the outline and the, the volume of it, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to charge that yellow wash also with some of this beautiful quinacridone coral, but I'm going to tone it down a little bit by mixing it in. So let's just see what we can do here. Oh yeah, that's more peri color. Peri, yes. Okay. Boink, boink. I'm going to... Ooh, yes. Very nice. Love to sprinkle things. Oh. Boo boo. There we go. And I'm actually going to put a little bruise on it, I think, with some magenta. Oh boy, poor little pear. But that is a lovely color to mix in with the. And a little bit up here because we don't want it to be lonely and unbalanced down there. There we go. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, good. We're just getting the shadow in there really nicely. And now we're going to do a little detail work on that stem up there, even though usually I'd let it dry very well before I did this. I'm just going to... There, I've just mixed a black. I think I'll make it a warm black by adding a little more burnt sienna to it. Yes, and I'm going to get that right on a little tip there. And then I'm going to... There we go. We're going to paint where this is in shadow. Yeah, see the light is, is on one side of it. There we go. Switch over. And a little more water so it's not dry brushing giving me that dry brushed look on the leaf. And actually I'm going to add a little blue because I like it a little darker. There we go. There. Pear. And I think I'd like a little more of this green in here too, just to give it a little more roundedness. Now, I think it's time for a bit of spatter. So, we need something to protect ah, the rest of the painting, or we will have spatter everywhere. It will look like the the pear exploded with spatter. So I'm going to take this little brush. It's nice and wet. I'm going to get some of that dark that I just put on the, the uh, stem and I'm going to, ooh, look at that. Pear, pear, pear. All those little pear lenticels. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is good. Now, I see where my bruise looks a little bit wet and it kind of got away from me so I'm just gonna get it dry again and add a little paint that's a little drier and maybe it'll maybe it'll heal itself okay now I would like to put a little bit darker down here come here dark and so, yes. Oh, yummy dark. Okay. There. Now, now that pear is sitting there. And I am going to call that good enough. Uh, I've shown you how you can mix paints to be dark. You can add water to get them lighter. How to leave your whites without using any kind of masking or going back in with a white watercolor crayon, for instance, which I am not above doing. Uh, all, everything's fair game as far as materials. I'm looking at my value study. I think it's pretty darn close. Close enough anyway. Let's take a little bit of, there we go, a little more light right there. How's that? Just take it right up with that towel. And now I'm going to put my 5x7 mat on top of it, and voila, the painting. So, <clears throat> once you get your paintings done of a pear or any other simple shape, please share them uh, with us by posting them on Facebook on the Rancho Cordova Arts Facebook page. Thanks for watching today. I'll be back with more watercolor vi videos, so stay tuned and check out tomorrow's video featuring Cheryl Gleason. She is awesome and she's got something fun for you to do. Bye for now.